Hey ho guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you my PvE build of Wind Shuriken Ninja aka Shurinado. In general, Ninja is divided into 3 DPS build, Sword Physical, Shuriken Physical, and Shuriken Magic build. Here, I want to focus on Shuriken Physical build and show you the benefits of this build. This class might be considered as melee class, but you can use Shuriken to attack enemies from far away. Additionally, Ninja has the ability to change the element into one of the four basic elements and Ghost Element with extra element damage buffs. Can this build compete with another PvE classes? Let's find out together! But before we start, don't forget to show some love, like, and subscribe. Alright, let's do this! First of all, let's see how much damage I can do with full buffs. The dummy setting is as follows. The damage of main skill Wind's Shuriken Swift Shadow is about 217 million. My DPS is also supported by other skills such as Wind Dog, Thunder Beast and Clones. My damage on MVP stats still can't be counted on this setting, so basically I could do much more damage because of my MVP damage cuts and equipment. Now I'm going to show you the damage on MVP dummy here using Lost Isle 3 boss setting. My wind shuriken damage is about 18 million, which isn't that bad. As reminder, my DPS are supported by other skills, making my DPS way more than only 18 million per second. First of all, I am going to show you how the stats should be distributed and which attributes are important for instances. Strength is your basic stats to boost your attack, so max this out. Dex is needed to boost hit in general, but additionally it improves the damage of Wind Shuriken while using this card. Also max this out. For the remaining points you can go with Fit to boost your HP or In to boost your Thunder Beast and skill damage from Zenubia card. For Legend instances you need 80% penetration, 200% Igno defense, 50% skill damage, and 50-90% to element damage. In the following you can see all my stats and attributes. After using Fire Souls, your chosen element damage is increased by 20%. So at least you will reach 50% easily without using element equip or cards. I am going to show you my skill distribution and explain some of the skills you need for Shurinado build. Max out Wind Monster Cultivation to improve your attack, hit, and penetration. With 4 souls, you can change your element of damage to one of the 4 basic elements while improving the corresponding element damage and damage reduction by 20%. Tranquil Restoration is very useful to heal your HP. After chanting this skill, you can restore up to 75% of max HP and SP. Mystic Shroud is the hidden skill of Ninja. While hiding, you can increase your attack range by 3 metas and your ignore defense by 24%. You can avoid AoE damage easily with this skill, so max this out. Ninjutsu Thousand Shadows is the skill to summon shadow clones that help you kill the enemies. 
Shadow Clones attack can also improve your pen up to 30%. In the following, you can see all attributes of the clones. In addition, the clones can be summoned automatically if you use this weapon and activate its tier 5 effect. Also, the damage of shadow clones can be increased up to 25% in Heidi. Summoning Ogre summons Thunder Beast that inflicts wind magic damage for the skill duration. The number of Thunder Beasts can be increased by 2 with this rune. Wind Dart Cast is your base skill for your main DPS skill, so max this out. The damage of this skill can be increased by using this rune. For the 4th job, you can max out all the skills, but you can prioritize following skills at first. This skill is a debuff for your enemies, reducing the chosen element damage reduction of them by 30%. The enemies can also get debuff stat depending on which element you use. The enemies ignore defense can also be decreased if they are inside the skill area. Wind Shuriken Swift Shadow is your main DPS skill, leaving a shuriken on the floor for 5 seconds and dealing damage every second. Wind Shuriken can target the enemies directly with the help of this rune. The shuriken will follow the enemies until they die or the duration ends. Spectral Shift improves your strength and intelligence by 50 while converting your element into ghosts. The skill can be helpful against ghost enemies. Izayoi allows you to insta cast any skill for 35 seconds. This can be useful for casting some skills like shadow clones or resurrecting your teammates instantly. Quick escapes allow you to avoid instant death with a 20% trigger rate. The rate can be increased by using this rune. This is my equipment overview of main and shadow equipments. To boost your damage, you can use Dragon Slayer as your offhand. Try to get Armor Breaker as high as possible for your enchant. Use this card to boost your Wind Dart cast damage. Alternatively, you can use Alistar. Hawsall, Late King's Chest Knights, or Mary Rowland card. For armor, I currently use Soul Cage to boost both my attack and physical damage. Alternatively, you can use Curse Armor, Dragon Blood Armor, or Other Shaw. On the one hand, Curse Armor can improve your penetration and ignore defense. Other Shaw Petrol on the other hand improves your element damage. Try to get Morale 3 or 4 to boost your ignore defense. For cards, you can use following cards. For garment, I choose Leather Spaldron to boost both my Ignore Defense and Skill Damage with PDI as Enchant. Zenubia, Mastering Star, or Mayfair Lynx card can be used in garment to boost your damage. I use these shoes to boost my attack and penetration. Alternatively, you can use Dominator War Boots or Fair Judgment. Try to get high PDI as Enchant. There are some good cards for shoes like Moonstar, Edgar Star, or Flute Star. As low budget alternatives, you can use Water Spirit or Rainbow Fall card. For accessories, you should use Steel Ambition to boost your physical damage and attack percent. Alternatively, you can either use Diamond Eerie or Heart of Molten Fire. You need to get Sharp Blade 3 or 4 for your Encha to boost your attack and physical damage. Moonlight Tender Star is a nice option for accessories. If you can get Devil Governor or Bio Buffo card, use them. Wind Shuriken is the only weapon you should use for Shurinado build. Your movement speed and wind dot cast damage can be improved by each refinement. It's also very important to get tier 5 as soon as possible to increase your damage, its ignore defense, and to auto summon shadow clones. 
try to get sharp blade or morale 3 or 4 to boost your damage or ignore defense. For cards you can use break star or minus star card to boost your damage. For head head gear I currently use holy knight blessing to boost my skill damage. Alternatively you can use following head gears. Try to get high dex or strength in your ancient. For cards you can use following cards or any penetration or damage related cards. Cute Blower is one of the best fast headgears we have so far. Optimize this headgear by refining this to plus 6. Other face headgear that are useful are as follows. For Encha, you can go with Moral 304 or PDI. Ocean's Attachment is one of the best move headgear for PvE. You need to get at least plus 6 to maximize the damage bonus from this headgear. You can use Lightfoot. Like Glutonous Imp or any penetration or damage related move headgear alternatively. Strength or Dex is the best answer for this one. Currently, I use Rough Wing to boost my penetration, and because the headgear has moral 4 as answer. To boost your damage even further, I recommend you to use Goodwill Gift Box or Chicken Eggs. For Encha, you can go with moral 3 or 4. For tail, you can use any damage related tail headgear such as it's too late, rock bunny, or beautiful ensemble. Try to get sharp blade as high as possible to boost your physical damage. For shadow equipments, you can use following equipments. The encha should be the same like the one for main equipments. For offhand, I recommend you to use Rosa Chain. Alternatively, you can use Fink Magic Bracelet or Skeleton Bracelet. For armor, you can use Chosen's Armor for some attack and fear resistance. For garment, I choose White Duke's Mantue to improve my ignore defense and skill damage. I use Saint Mary's because the shoes are good shoes overall for both physical and magic user. Alternatively, you can use Little Fairies to boost your physical damage. For accessories, I recommend you at least to use one ring of loyalty to improve your attack because of the set effect with Chosen's armor. You can also choose Fox Thief or other alternatives as follows. For the attack mirror, you can use either Bilgi's armor, Combustible Knife, or Claw. For the defense mirror, you can use anything you desire such as Cardo, Static Shield, or Meteorite Armor. For the Relic, I recommend you to use Horn of the Unyielding for better survivability, or Lot of Pain to boost your damage through Pen and higher element coefficient. For the Attribute Wounds, you can put yours as shown below. High Wind Pursuit rune is very important for this build. All three lines are also very important, but prioritize to get third line first. If you max out that cast, I would recommend you to use this rune, otherwise better use Thunderwolf's protection rune with third line. Prioritize to get high first line from this rune so you can use this skill more often. Unrestrained Wind rune is your second important rune. Prioritize to get third line, but all three lines are also important. So get both first and second lines as high as possible. Cicada Night Rune first line increases the trigger rate of quick escape up to 15% more. Get first line as high as possible. All three lines of all direction shadow runes are nice, but your priority is to get the third line first. After that, focus on first line to boost shadow clones damage. For arcane runes, I recommend you to use following runes. Use white blade rune to boost your damage, mostly if you do solo instance and boss gets to approach you to attack. Transmission rune can optimize the damage of your wind shuriken if your enemy is 6 meters away from you. Wind shuriken has an attack range of exact 6 meters, but in your hiding state, your attack range would be more than enough to activate this rune. War Preparedness Rune is a nice one to improve your survivability. 
With this and all the damage reduction buffs, Ninja can survive the damage he receives better. For AC runes, you can like on all the runes point with Guild Country. In the following, you can see all attributes you can get from AC runes. Prioritize to get important related attributes such as attack, ignore defense, and movement speed. You should also focus on following skill points. First of all, let's see how much damage I can do on this floor. I was using full buffs here including foods, meals, and alloy. My attack pattern is as follows. Four souls, myriad hyakume, prefer four elite, and attack. As you can see, I could easily drain his HP out with my shuriken, thunder beast, and clones. Avoid his AoE skill with shadow leap. You can use Myriad Hyakume again after it disappeared. By the way, I use both Wind Shuriken and Wind Dart because my Wind Shuriken cooldown is still too high. Otherwise, it's better to use Wind Shuriken alone. For this floor, you can replace your Fall Soul with Spectral Shift, changing your element to Ghost. In general, you should do more damage with this element than other elements. Sadly, I forget to remove Fall Soul from my prevent for Elite, so the element changed back to Water. Hence why my damage on this floor was much lower than expected. I also didn't think to use Myriad Hyakume, but my damage was okay enough to finish this floor. For this floor, I use the same strategy like on the first floor. After recent update, using Myriad Hyakume won't cost your 4 souls, so you can also use this following attack pattern. Prefer for elite, Myriad Hyakume, and attack. Kill the summon MVP as soon as possible, and don't forget to use heal items to restore your HP. Soon after, kill one of the red orb and go to hard to kill it as soon as possible. In the third phase, you can kill her as soon as possible, also don't forget to avoid her AoE skills. For this floor, I use the same strategy like on Lost Isle Legend. Avoid all AoE or burst damage you can see and kill the mini dragons as soon as possible. But this shouldn't be a problem at all. Don't forget to use the heal items as soon as possible, even if you lose only half of your HP. You can also use Myriad Hyakume to clear his AoE skill. Oh, instant death. <laughs> but this was my third try, so I should be able to finish this floor. And I did, but I also forgot to record it somehow. PML1 was definitely harder to finish than LIL, but I still managed to finish that floor. The second floor is easier in general, you can avoid all his attack easily, but the problem would be to kill the rook as soon as possible. Take the boss to the corner to avoid his chest minions.
As soon as the first phase is done, Rook will be summoned. My damage was still too low to kill the Rook quickly, so sadly I couldn't finish this floor. In the following, you can see the list of pro and contra of using Shurinado for PvE. That's it, that was my PvE build of Shurinado. In my opinion, this class is definitely worth it to try and can compete with some of PvE classes. To optimize the build, I would recommend you to use Sin of the Living in combination with Cactus Back Headgear and a Cane Codex in Shadow Equipment. Mostly if you have a good second line of High Wind Pursuit Rune to reduce the skill cooldown of Wind Shuriken to under 1 second. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Feel free to ask and give comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. See you soon! Your flight hat.